Greetings, Austin. It is I, Omni Brennan, back with another Omni Corner, my corner. Um, this is where we show our appreciation and I showcase to you some of uh, our new omnibus editions or whatever we've got lying around. Thick collections, things like that. It's fantastic. But yeah, we got something new this week. DC has released Alice. Now, this is an awesome collection. Um, obviously, someone who's a big fan of Planetary. I was uh, really excited to see this was coming out. Um, yeah, this was this comes out, in, you know, sort of in the um, you know early 2000s in that time period when you know you had writers like Warren Ellis and Mark Millar who's also on this book um, and Bendis sort of taking superheroes and doing you know really getting the writing style uh, changed to really fit the mindset of the time they kind of brought more of a human element to these characters more than they'd kind of ever seen before so you get things like Jessica Jones you get things like Planetary eventually and then down to Civil War where characters who are used to be kind of larger than life, bright and shining, um, brought down a level and sort of made to exist in the real world and planetary, or sorry, <laughs> I'm, super, I'm a crazed fan. Um, the authority is definitely a uh, part of that ilk. Uh, you basically get, um, you know, as a group of team, you know, very kind of similar to the Just League, you get characters like Jimmy Sparks, Midnighter, Apollo, the Doctor, the Engineer, uh, Jake Hawksmore, and Swift and um, they've all kind of got their different power sets and yeah this is kind of them kind of deciding that uh, you know regular society uh, isn't really uh, doing a great job so they were going to become the authority and now you see where that title comes from um, it's really awesome you get like I said you get some of these great early efforts from uh, people like uh, Warren Ellis who had wrote the uh, Stormwatch series that kind of preceded this as part of the Wild Storm brand before DC kind of gobbled it up uh, you also get an early collaboration with Mark Millar, who, like I said before, would kind of go on to do some really awesome things at Marvel and at DC before going on to create his own stuff. Um, now he's working for Netflix, crazy enough. Um, you get art by Brian Hitch and Frank Quietly. Uh, it's, it's a great collection. It's sort of uh, uh, some of the some of the all-time comic book greats um, who are still around, but uh, it's kind of them firing on all cylinders creatively. Uh, yeah, I highly recommend it if you want to see something sort of deconstructionist and... and uh, um, a different take on superheroes. Uh, you get a lot of the first uh, uh, gay weddings between two characters. We see Midnighter and Apollo, who are very uh, kind of similar to Batman and Superman, uh, you know, form this romance and eventually get married and what was a big, kind of a big deal just not that long ago. Um, so yeah, it's really cool. It's kind of the, uh, the uh, surrogate love story between Batman and Superman. I'm sure DC's been uh, ready to tell for for many, many years now. And now they own those characters. Uh, so we've definitely seen them uh, creep up in some later DC volumes as well. Um, what else have we got? This week we've got volume three also of The Boys. Um, this is, <laughs> I'm getting photobombed here. Um, <laughs> this is a, a series by Garth Ennis and who's the artist in here? Robertson. Um, basically sort of like Preacher uh, on AMC, uh, The Boys has got on uh, Amazon Prime. Uh, stars the likes of Carl Urban. Actually, this is, of course, not your traditional omnibus. This is sort of the Dynamite's version of an omnibus. We've seen similar treatment when they would collect their uh, Army of Darkness comics that they've been doing for a long time. And yeah, it kind of, even though it says omnibus, it kind of takes the form of these thick, kind of comprehensive uh, paperback collections. But they're really cool. The, I like the uh, I like the photograph uh, covers. Um, volume two is so awesome. He's one of the one of the more underappreciated actors working right now. I highly I love love Carl Urban. Um, but yeah, I've watched a few episodes of the show so far. It's really hard hitting. Uh, basically, it's another kind of deconstructionist superhero narrative. Uh, we've seen it, where we've mentioned it in the past, sort of in, uh, in one of our Throwback Thursday videos. Um, but basically, you have a world where it's a very nihilistic view of superheroes, where what we kind of think of as, as uh, the kind of old school image of the rock star, the sort of partying hard, doing drugs, debauchery, um, and not really facing much consequences for those actions. Um, that's what superheroes are in this world. They're kind of, they kind of operate above the law. The things they do are covered up. The collateral damage they cause, they take no responsibility for. So that's where the boys comes in, and it's a group of these characters. You've got characters like Billy Butcher, Wee Huey, who originally was modeled to look like Simon Pegg back in the day before he became a megastar, and he's now showing up in the in the show. Not as Wee Huey, but it's it's cool to see him uh, show up. But you see these characters yeah, like Frenchie, like the female who is a boy, uh, one of one of the boys, uh, and their whole deal is to put the boot on the throat of the superheroes that get out of check, with their ultimate goal being the Seven, who is in this series kind of like the Authority, kind of a Justice League surrogate. Um, and uh, so yeah, you've got uh... oh gosh, what's the what's the main? Uh... 
forget his name, but yeah, he's, he's basically the Superman character um, who kind of runs everything, sort of like a crime boss almost, like a corporate crime boss, and so that's sort of, and they're kind of a rat, the boys are a ragtag team, to sort of bring them back in check. Uh, there's conspiracies, there's a lot of nods to comic book history, um, a sort of a lot of uh, allegories to you know real world re real world situations as well, kind of in the context of uh, these are twenty nine ninety nine cover price. Of course, as always, we take our ten percent off. Uh, they're on to volume three so far of these recollections, and each one kind of recollects uh, several of the stories that you that were originally uh, individualized um, in the smaller volumes. So for volume one, lost track. There it is. Uh, you get boys 1 through 14, that's the name of the game, Cherry, Get Some, and Glorious 5-Year Plan storylines uh, with Volume 2. Uh, you get the boys 15 through 30, that gives you Good for the Soul, I Tell You No Lie, GI, and We Gotta Go Now storylines, and Volume 3 uh, gives you the boys' uh, infamous storyline, Hero Gasm, uh, the, which was uh, originally released as a side miniseries, uh, but you get that 1 through 6, as well as the continued boys' issues 31 through 38. Uh, that's Herogasm, uh, Self-Preservation Society, Nothing Like It in the World, La Plume de Ma Tante est sur la Table. Uh, I don't speak French, clearly. I apologize if I butchered that uh, accent horrendously. And uh, The Instant White Hot Wild. It's awesome. Uh, kind of uh, the, or the Authority Omnibus Bear is the kind of standard 99 <laughs> Yeah, ninety nine ninety nine dollars uh, cover, uh, cover price. Also with the 10% off, kind of kills the tax on there. And with it, you're getting... Uh, Quite a collection of issues. You're getting Authority 1 through 29, the Planetary Authority crossover ruling the world number one. Uh, you get the annual 2000 number one, uh, and then various of the character spinoffs like Virginia Sparks Secret History of the Authority 1 through 5, um, Wildstorm Summer Special, and other kind of appearances those characters made. Um, I, as you can probably kind of tell, I kind of love the sort of modern deconstructionist superhero take. As much as I love earnestly the superhero genre, I kind of love to watch it kind of get picked apart and, and, and crumble, and uh, the authority and uh, the boys, two very different takes by two very di by some very different creators, but uh, ultimately in that same vein. Um, yeah, check out the show on Amazon, it's really cool, it's really, uh, really does uh, justice to this series. If you liked uh, Preacher, the show, uh, it's kind of produced by uh, some of the same people, and it's, uh, yeah, it's awesome. Also check out The Authority, hopefully this will get a show or a movie, it'd be really awesome, really epic, and yeah, this has been uh, Omni Corner. Uh, as usual, if you want to know some of the availability, pricing, or if you have any suggestions for omnibus editions or thick collections, or uh, we'll see what we got. Um, as well as um, stay tuned for our Labor Day sale. It's uh, it's coming. We're still waiting on those details, but it's going to be awesome. It always is every year, even if we keep you chomping at the bit just a little bit longer. But yeah, stay tuned. I'm excited for next week's uh, Omni Corner video because we're going to be getting a re-release of the Marvel's Golden Thing. Like most Marvel new printings, it's going to have its uh, a DM variant for the first printing, uh, the original Frank Paul cover of the original issue. It's awesome, and we'll, of course, get into that next week. Um, and then I think that's about it for now. Goodbye to y'all, and of course, omnis to the people. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't existed this long before. Where's the fade to black? Where is it? You're breaking. You're breaking the fourth wall. Ah, what wall? The walls aren't closing in like they're supposed to. I'm just gonna disappear now. <laughs> Time to return to my my omni cave. I can still see your phone.